I hereby call the meeting, special meeting of the Brockton City Council for Monday, December 7th, 2020, 6 p.m. to order. Good evening, everyone. Um, out of respect of public health and in response to Governor, Governor's declared state of emergency, this meeting will be closed to the public and interested parties can instead access the deliberations via live stream on YouTube. This meeting is being held in accordance with Governor Charlie Baker's signed open meeting law order, date, order dated March 12, 2020, which relieves a public body from the requirement of section 20 of chapter 30A that it conduct its meetings in a public place that is open and physically accessible to the public provided that the public body makes provisions to ensure public access to the deliberations of the public body for interested members of the public through adequate alternative means. Um, good evening, everyone. I know that we have made this uh, hearing open to uh, via Zoom to the public. So just so everybody knows, we have allowed uh, participants in to the, um, to the meeting. Uh, before we begin, counselors, we're going to take a roll call vote just so we so we have a quorum. Councilor Cardoso. Present. Councilor Cruz. Present. Councilor Ianieri. Councilor Fowell. Present. Councilor Lally. Present. Councilor Mendez. Present. Councilor Monahan. Present. Councilor Nicastro. Present. Councilor Rodriguez. Councilor Rodriguez. Councilor Thompson. Present. Nine councilors are present. Um, Um, this evening's meeting, counselors, I will be reading the part of the clerk as well as my part. Number one, call of the meeting is accepted and placed on file. Officers return of notice is accepted and placed on file. At this point, we're going to um, open the hearing. So ordered that the city council hereby determines the percentages of the local tax levy for FY 2021 in accordance with the provisions of MGL chapter 40, section 56 to be borne by each class of real property as defined in section 2A of chapter 59 and personal property. At this time, having arrived, I declare this hearing open. Is there anyone here in favor? If so, please come forward and give your name to the clerk. I believe we have, um, Mr. John O'Donnell and our CFO, Mr. Clarkson, would you like to begin? Yes, thank you, Madam Chairman, uh, members of the city council and members of the public gathered here tonight. My name is Troy Clarkson and I'm the chief financial officer for the city of Brockton. It's my pleasure to introduce uh, the chairman of the board of assessors, John O'Donnell and members of the board of assessors, Chris Pike, <clears throat> and Julie Castor, who are here with us tonight. Julie will speak briefly uh, and provide some background information to you. Uh, as I did uh, last year, I'd like to just provide a brief opening statement and provide an overview of the purpose of tonight's meeting and speak to you a little bit about uh, what we're asking you to do here tonight. As it says in the packet that was provided to you and posted uh, uh, several days ago on the city's website. The purpose of tonight's hearing is to establish the proportion of the tax levy raised by the residential and commercial class of property. This hearing is required under Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 40, Section 56. And so I read that uh, from the packet so that we start the meeting off uh, and are clear about what the, what the ask is, what is being requested of the city council. Uh, this year, as in all years, and, and in most communities, uh, there's lots of discussion about how the increased property values are impacting the work that we're asking you to do tonight. So as I did at your meeting a couple of weeks ago, I'd like to just speak very briefly on that. The amount of taxes that the city of Brockton can collect in any given year uh, is limited by law. 
And we call that the levy limit, the maximum amount that we can collect on an annual basis in property taxes. And many, many years ago, um, back in the early 80s, Proposition two and a half was passed. And, and, and what that says is every year we can only increase that levy limit by two and a half percent, unless the legislative body, the city council and the voters uh, approve an exclusion from that. And that's usually uh, via an override, which is a permanent increase in the tax levy for a specific amount or two different ways to fund capital projects. But none of those are on the table tonight. What we're here to do tonight is to simply within that levy limit, within that legal limit of the amount that we can collect in taxes to distribute uh, that amount between the residential and the commercial and industrial properties. So we have for the last several years uh, in Brockton, uh, based on the real estate market have seen significantly rising real estate values. But it's important to note, I think for purposes of tonight's discussion, that an increase in property values does not increase the amount of taxes that we collect from properties. Just for clarity's sake, I'll repeat that. An increase in property values does not increase the amount we, the city, can collect in taxes. Again, that amount remains constant. So what we're here to do tonight is to ask you to deliberate and decide what the distribution is uh, of the various classes of property, hence the name of classification hearing. And Julie from the Board of Assessors and John O'Donnell, the chairman, will get into more detail about specifically what that means. But I thought it was important to start off our discussion uh, with that overall 30,000 foot view of, of how the property values uh, are related to the overall taxation. So John and Julie will talk in specific details about what the distribution is, uh, we'll make a recommendation to you, but you have broad authority and flexibility in distributing uh, the, those rates, or, excuse me, not the rates, but the classes and how they're affected. Generally in Brockton, the city council has taken the position to distribute the rate so it's more favorable to residential taxpayers. So to distribute the rate and shift it so that more of the burden falls on commercial and industrial rate payers. And again, our team will get into that in more detail, but I think that's important to note too, that the, the council has historically taken the position um, that the rate should be distributed so that the burden is less on our residential taxpayers. I'm happy to answer any questions, Madam Chairman from, from the council, uh, but uh, unless, if there are no questions, then I would, I would ask to defer to a member of the Board of Assessors, Julie Castor, who will provide some additional information uh, on the specifics in your packet. Thank you, Mr. Clarkson. Yes, I think uh, the best way is to have you uh, do your presentations, then we'll take questions uh, from the public and from the counselors. I'm just going to remind everybody to please um, mute yourselves. Uh, that way we don't hear any background noise when someone is speaking. Thank you. Uh, Julie, good evening, um, Ms. Castor. Thank you for being here this evening. Thank you. Good evening, counselors. My name is Julie Castor, Assessor for the City of Brockton. I would like to make a brief statement concerning the fiscal year 2021 tax rate classification hearing. First, I would like to thank the entire staff of the Assessor's Office for their support and assistance throughout the year. The purpose of this hearing is to establish the proportion of tax levy raised by residential and commercial class of property, also known as the factor. This hearing is required under Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 40, Section 56. The assessed values for fiscal year 2021 represent the estimate of market value as of January 1st, 2020, utilizing verified sales data from calendar year 2019. Assessments represent 100% of market value as required by Massachusetts general law. The Department of Revenue has certified the real and personal property values for the city, as well as the new growth value. The assessors are required to fairly assess 27,530 parcels in the city. There are 24,245 residential parcels, 
1,740 commercial and industrial parcels and 1,545 personal property accounts. The total taxable value of all real and personal property in the city for fiscal year 2021 is $9,153,271,727, which is an 8.63 increase from fiscal year 2020 and is the highest total taxable value ever for the city of Brockton. This year, the city added a total of 2,331 1089 in new growth tax dollars in residential, commercial, and personal property. The residential class total value increased 9.25%. The commercial class total value increased 2.08%. The industrial class total value increased 8.10%. And personal property class total value increased 16.33%. People often associate rising assessments with rising taxes. However, this is not the case. Rising budget budgets cause rising taxes. If the budget increases, typically taxes increase. The assessed value represents the market value of property. If all assessments went down 25% and the budget increased, taxes would still increase. The purpose of tonight's tax rate classification hearing is to adopt a residential factor. The city council will decide on how much of the tax levy the owners of residential properties will pay and how much of the tax levy the owners of commercial, industrial, and personal property will pay. This decision is what creates two tax, tax rates or a split rate in the city of Brockton. The split tax rate in the city of Brockton taxes commercial, industrial, and personal property at a higher rate than residential properties. If there was no shift, there would be one rate and based upon this year's levy, the single tax rate for City of Brockton would be $16.94. Last December, the City Council voted to set the fiscal year 2020 shift factor at 1.72. This meant that for fiscal year 2020, commercial, industrial, and personal property, while representing 16.57% of the total taxable value, paid 28.5% of the total taxes. Brockton continues to have the lowest average single family tax bill of the surrounding towns based upon fiscal year 2020 data. The average single family bill was $4,410, which was a $206 increase over the fiscal year 2019 average bill. The average tax bill in the city was $1,012 lower than the average bill of the contiguous towns, including Brockton. Thank you all, and I'll now answer any questions. Thank you, Ms. Castor. Um, Thank you. Counselors, do you have any questions for Ms. Castor? I don't see any hands go up from the counselors. Um, Mr. O'Donnell, Ms. Castor, thank you for all your work on this. Thank you. Good evening, counselors. Uh, I don't have much to add to that. Julie covered the bases pretty well. Uh, just last year, the factor was 172, and the two previous years was 173. So you've been pretty consistent on where, where you've been shifting the burden. So again, I'll answer any questions you may have. Thank you. Any questions for Mr. O'Donnell, counselors? <clears throat> I see Councillor um, Farwell. Yes, yeah, so actually, uh, Madam Chair, either Mr. O'Donnell or, or Ms. Castor, um, valuations obviously are an important part of this equation because the, the, the value of someone's house drives the thousand per valuation amount that we set. And a couple of things have come up after I reviewed the information that was published by the assessors. It was a document called Public Disclosure, and it listed all of the different street addresses and the, the current values and then the proposed values. And so my first question is, is that still a valid document? Has anything changed that would have been published earlier for the public to look at? Julie? Uh, counselor, there was only one. Um, so during that period of time, uh, taxpayers can um, uh, dispute their value based on the data, not the value, but based on if we have 
uh, misinformation. And there was only one, it was a commercial property. They contacted us and we went out and we corrected it. So it was only one property that has been corrected. All right, here's, I'll give you a couple of examples and, and, uh, and then just ask for your response because I'm wondering if there isn't some type of a software program that you use with some algorithm that, that sets values. There is, on my street, let's just take my street. I have a house, three or four houses down from me. It was built in the year 2000. The, the value of that house went down by $1,500. And I, I just find it amazing that given what we just talked about, the value of houses going up in Brockton, uh, that how could someone's value from January 1st of one year to January 1st of the other, 1119 to 1120, go down by $1,500. I mean, it, it, it's just such an inconsequential amount. It just tells me that I don't think a human being looked at that house and said, gee, something's happened and it's, it's worth less. But let's go to Cottage Grove Avenue, which is over in Ward 3C. There's a house over there that was assessed for $448,900 in fiscal year 20, and now it's assessed at $432,100. And, and again, I, I, I am not saying that the assessors have done anything wrong. I do not know, nor do, nor do I want to know all of the intricacies of how we establish the value of houses. I just want to make sure that when we send out a tax bill to someone, they've got the right value on their house. Uh, Can I answer you? Uh, yeah, let me just give you one last example, which sure. obviously is personal. Side by side, I'm one house, my next door neighbor is the other. I have three bedrooms, one and a half baths. They have six bedrooms, two baths. Same size lot, side by side. Their value went up this year by about $6,400 and mine went up $26,000. And, and, and you know what? It may be legit, but you can see how the average person would look at that and say, how could that happen? How could you have two houses on the same size lot built within a year of each other? One goes up twenty six thousand. The other one goes up six thousand. And the one that went up six thousand is larger. And how could Cottage Grove go down? That's a very, very good residential area. And clearly, the house further down the road on Braymore from me to go down fifteen hundred dollars, uh, John, is just. It, it certainly piques the curiosity as to what type of a software program or how these numbers are driven. So that that's my commentary, and I'd be Hi. glad to hear from you. Let me give, I'll give you a basic answer. And it happens in every community. We don't assess individual homes. We do mass, mass assessment. So we assess groups of property that at a time. And some values go up, some values go down. It happens every year. And we can't go in and pick, say we see uh, 400 properties values go down. We can't just go in and adjust those values. But, but, so. but don't, is, would you get part of your presentation from either the vendor, uh, a, a, an anomaly? In other words, are the parameters where something would jump out at you and you would say, wait a minute, that doesn't seem right. I, I, because what I, my fear is, what you're telling me is that this is not really a human exercise. It's more of a software exercise and Look, if mine went up to 26,000, then it's legit, that's fine. I don't want somebody up in Ward 6 or in Ward 2 to have their property go up 26,000 and it's not justified. And I know I know all about mass appraisals and I'm sure things go on in other communities, but I'm worried about Brockton. And, I'm, and I'm, my concern is that I just want to make sure that when we set the rate that we have given people the absolute correct value of their house which will translate into the payment that they owe the city. And, and I, I have to tell you and to my colleagues, the examples that I just gave you make me scratch my head. Cool. I do not know how a house in my neighborhood could go down $1,500. And if anybody it, looked at the list, they would say, wait a minute, that doesn't seem quite right. It, it happened all over the city. It, all it, over the it, city? Yeah. There's values that go down and there's values that go up. That's just part of the process and that's why we fight that's why people can file for abatements that's why we had the the period the eight-day period when people could contest 
you know, we're not saying all our data is 100% perfect. That's why we have this, the process that they can go through. But the, the information that we give the state, they certify all that information. But, but, but they, don't, they don't know. They, don't they know do see. They yes, they do them. see values go up and down. Oh, oh, of course we do. But $1,500, I mean, is, that, is there anyone sitting there that can tell me how a house on Braymore Road could simply go down by $1,500? What would be the logical reason for that? Using mass appraisal or any other software program, what, what could possibly drive an insignificant number like that to be attached to a house in my neighborhood? It's a, it's a tech, technical question I can't answer. All right, well, I thank you. I won't take up any more time. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Councilor Cardoso. Hi, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, uh, Mr. O'Donnell, um, thank you for being here and for answering some of these questions that I had for you last time. And this is uh, to Councillor Farrell's point. This is exactly why we need to have more clear answers to these things because people are wondering what's going on in this city and we need more transparency. We can't, you know, say that we don't know, we don't have answers to that. We need clear answers to why some values are going up and some are going down and what's going on. People want to know. And that's why my questions were around the accuracy of data cards last time for you um, and an internal audit of this process. And so I'm still very interested in answers to those questions. Um, and I'm sure a lot of folks on this call are, are interested, so. <clears throat> that's just, that's all I have. I'm sure there'll be, once we get the public comments going, you'll hear a lot of this because this is what people want to know. All set count. Thank you, Madam Chair. So Donald, do you want to, you say you didn't have a question, you were just making questions for the assessors are Mr. Um, Clarkson. I don't see any hands up. Okay, so now we're going to continue with the hearing. We have um, people from the general public. Is there anyone else here in favor that would like to speak on this matter? in favor and opposition, I'm going to, going to open it up to the public. Um, I believe Mr. Brathwaite, Jamal Brathwaite, I, did you have your, would you like to, do you have a question on this matter or comment? Uh, yeah, yeah, I have some uh, questions. Surely, for... if yes, everyone sorry, speaking can please give their, their name, their full name and their, um, their address for the, for the record, please. Yes, please state your full name and address for the record. Yes, my name is Jamal Brackley. Uh, my address is 18 Parkview Lane. And my question is for John O'Donnell. Uh, John, as, first of all, thank you so much for providing all that supporting information to the council prior to your previous presentation on November 23rd. For, now, I appreciate in your communications, you've always said that the DOR certifies the data. But I also note that on November 23rd, you said that the DOR, this is the, the Division of, of Local Services does not look at the property card. So it's my understanding, but correct me if I'm wrong, from your explanation, the DOR, the Division of Labor, uh, Local Services does not look at the property card. And that's where the tax assessment data exists. So if they're not looking at the property card, who validates the accuracy of the tax assessment values published on the property card? Um, I have an answer to that. Um, the assessed values are audited every year by the Division of Local Services, which is the wow. section of DOR. However, during the month of July, the summer, as part of the five-year certification, we had Steve McCarthy from the Department of Revenue, and he conducted a review of property cards. He actually performed a drive-by on inspection of 100 single-family homes, 15 condos, 15 two-family homes, 10 three-family homes and 16 apartment buildings to um, verify the accuracy of the data that we had on property cards.
Mr. Brethright, you're muted, I believe, or we can't hear you. You need to unmute uh, Jamal. Okay, can you hear me now? Yes. My, my deepest apologies. I'm so sorry. Julie, I actually missed what you said. My phone cut out while you were talking. You, you see, now, I believe what, what I did here is you said the DOR does certification of all the data. I think that's what you said. I'll just repeat my answer. Um, so what I was saying was that the assessed values are audited every year by the Division of Local Services, which is a part of the section of the DOR. And during this, during the month of July this summer, as part of our five-year certification, Steve McCarthy from the Department of Revenue conducted a review of property cards. Um, part of that, he performed a drive-by on the inspection of 100 single-family homes, 15, 15 condos, 15 two-family homes, 10 three-family homes, and 16 apartment buildings to verify the accuracy of the data that we have on the property cards. Okay. Okay, great. Well, thank you. Thank you for explaining that, Julie. Now, further, um, now within the tax assessment office and underneath their general process, who conducts a review over data changes? So for example, does John as the assessor, does he conduct a review over data changes? Specifically, he's conducting a review to identify data accuracy and completeness. But does does he do a review of it or do you guys just solely rely on the auditor or from the DOR, from the DOR's review? Hello, Jamal, it's John O'Donnell. Um, the board checks the data and also the Department of Revenue checks the changes that are made. Okay, so when they check the data, can you walk me through? So like, when they check the data, do they run a data change log? What's the name of the report they review? Can you walk us through the review process? No, there's no report. I answered these questions uh, two weeks ago. There's no report that we have. So how do you know, how, if you wanted to generate a population of all data changes, how would you do that? If we did that, it, the report would take over a week to populate. We make changes, we make address changes, we make ownership changes, we make a variety of changes and they cannot just do data changes. So as the assessor, how do you gain reassurance or assurance on the, on, on that, 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 that uh, the data changes made were accurate? This is why we have an appeal period. People can appeal their assessments. It's, it's up to the homeowners to look at their assessed values, to look at their property record cards. They're all on the GIS website. They've been there since October 28th. Mm -hmm. So they need to look at it also. Okay, so- We John. have 27,000 parcels. We, so I'm not gonna say there's not errors on some, but people need to look at them. That's how we, and then we'll come out and inspect the property. You know, when people pull building permits, we go out and inspect the property. That's where we get the data from. Got it. So now- If people how, don't pull a building permit, then we, mm -hmm. we don't have the data. Got it. So now, when, now, in absence of the existence of a data change log to review, how do you know that um, the data wasn't changed by someone who's um, unauthorized to change the data? There's only four people have authorization in the office to make data changes. Is, is that like an ITGC? Is that IT general control over the data? No, it's, it's, it's controlled by our software. Okay. They're not, people don't have access to all the different fields. Got it, got it. Now, um, moving forward, um, let's see here. So now you, oh, I want to understand, if there was ever, if you've ever identified an error on a property card. Now I noticed that you said that there was one example. Can you just, is that it for the year? Was there just one mistake identified or were there any others? No, there was only one property owner that notified us with errors on their property data card. So if a property owner does not identify that there's an error on the property card, then that means that we just assume the data is correct. Yes. 
Um, well, on that note, um, is there is there any objections to having the city auditor conduct their own review on the 2020 assessment? Uh, Troy, can you yeah, I, uh, answer, I, that? I can answer that? So the the role of the city auditor uh, generally, in my experience, and I've worked in several different communities, uh, does not encompass any sort of oversight of the Board of Assessors and the work that they do. That's why the Department of Revenue uh, has a process where uh, they review uh, and, and audit that data. So um, separation of duties and municipal finance is something that's critically important. And, and so uh, I'm happy to, Jamal, have a discussion uh, with you about that. Uh, but generally, in my experience, uh, the general laws are not constructed to provide that sort of oversight to an auditor. So, so I noticed that we put a lot of reliance on the DOR certification. Do, when the DOR provides that certification, do they provide a report? Uh, I, I need them? to interrupt, and I know this is a public hearing, but this is a public hearing for the public to speak, whether they're in favor or, or in opposition to the... Um, uh, during the hearing, it's really, um, I know that our CFO and our, our assessors have answered a lot of the questions at previous hearings. So I will limit the statements of, um, you know, whether you're in favor or in opposition. So overall, overall at the moment, um, from what it, my, my uh, statement is, I'm in opposition of this tax rate increase. And the reason why I'm in opposition is because I just, it sounds like the city of Brockton does from it sounds like from the tax assessor's own admission, they don't conduct a review over um, the quality of the data changes on the tax assessment. So there's a scenario risk that property, I appreciate we're trying to raise $155 million, but there's a scenario risk that it's being um, paid for disproportionately in absence of having adequate internal controls over the tax assessment process. Are you all set, Ms. Mr. Brathwaite? And so just my last ask is that if the, if the city council does vote to approve the tax rate increase, I ask that they also vote or make a motion to add the tax assessment process for 2020. If they can make a motion to recommend that it be added to the 2021 internal audit plan. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, I don't, the best way for the public to get our attention to be able to speak in favor or in opposition to this uh, matter this evening is to use the raise your hand um, feature. I, I see that a few of you are making comments in the chat room, but um, I think I'm going, but the best way is to raise your hand. I have um, Al Lynch that's asking, uh, saying that they have a question. But once again, I'm going to state that this is a hearing for a resident to speak in favor or in opposition. Miss um, Lynch, I'm not, or Mr. I'm not, it just says Al um, Lynch. It's Linda Lynch. I live at 31 Hi. Chestnut Drive. Hi. Hi, how, how are you? you? Please, thank you for stating your name and your address. You have You're a statement. Um, yeah. Naively, I was unaware of this document until Wynn just mentioned it. I've lived in the city most of my life, um, certainly with my husband for the last 35 years. So I just did a quick scan of our neighborhood. And curiously, the first six houses are plus 14, plus 2, plus 14, plus 2, plus 14, plus 2 in that order. Um, I mean, that seems to be very random. There's another plus 14, a plus 12, but then there's there's a poor neighbor who's got a 24%, which I, I understand it's up to them to, to look. But I guess my question is, did, I mean, I don't understand such a such a pattern. We've only we only have 13 houses. Um, but the pattern is very close throughout the neighborhood. It's almost like every other one. In, in those houses are all alike, you know, up to the point. They're all, well, very similar in style. But I mean, I mean I'm opposed to this. We are opposed to this, to an increase. We understand that things are changing, but I don't understand this type of an analysis based on the actual explanation given that it's random, but there's no valid uh, you know, facts that you can give to us as to 
how, you know, two houses sitting next to each other. Wynn seemed to have a $1,500 increase in, in his neighborhood. But when I'm looking, you know, we've got a definite pattern here of about an $11,000 increase for six folks who are all clustered near each other. So in that regard, I have to express my opposition to this. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Lynch. Um, in the, I also have, I believe it's Mr. Higgins. Did you have a, did you want to make a statement, Mr. Higgins? I know you were in the chat room, but no. Okay. I have Ms. Uh, Liz, Liz Lasso. You had your hand up. Please, uh, please uh, come, come forward and state your name and address to the clerk, please. My name is Elizabeth Lasso and I live at 99 Armiston Street. Did you just can everyone hear me? Yes. You can hear me. Yes. Okay, first of all, I agree with everything that Jamal has said, and I agree with what the uh, last person on here said that it not only seems uh, incorrect and not random, it seems that whomever is doing this is not assessing appropriately. And that's not right. I'm completely against any kind of tax increase whatsoever on the citizens of this city, especially during this kind of time, and especially because of the fact that it seems that the property values have been grossly reported, and it does not seem appropriate to move forward with any kind of tax increase until the city can figure out the appropriate X rate that each home is being assessed at for their value. I know mine is grossly wrong. I have assessed with my other neighbors who live in my neighborhood. I have a neighbor who spent a lot of money to update their home and their tax increase went up by a certain percentage while mine went up by a huge percentage. While meanwhile, I have a property is falling apart because I get flooded from the streets of Brockton who ruined my property with them not redoing my streets appropriately. I've had other property and um, uh, other street damage done by construction trucks that shouldn't have been driving on my pro on the street in the first place. And so my property's falling apart yet. I had one of the highest tax rate increases, meaning the highest property value increase on my street. How was that appropriate? Anyone? Anyone have an answer? Anyone have a plan on how they're going to get this right? No? Is that your comment? Ms. I'm against it then. I guess okay. we'll just end it with that. Thank you for your comments. Do, is there anyone else yeah, here in favor my or in opposition? Is there anyone else here in favor or in opposition that would like to speak on this matter? I just have Ellie. Please state, come, uh, please state your full uh, name to the uh, name and address to the clerk, please. Okay, um, Alexandra Texera. I live at 54 Henry Street. Um, I'm in Ward 5. Um, so just piggyback. I'm sorry, on I don't mean to interrupt you, but please mute your microphones. We're picking up a lot of background music uh, noise and um, it. It, we can't hear the people that are speaking. Thank you. You know what, It's let me move. It's probably me because my mom is on the phone. Is that better? Uh, we can hear you, yes. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, it was probably me. So um, just real quick, I just wanna piggyback on what everybody is saying about this being the wrong time to increase any type of increase. I mean, the water bill itself was enough and now we're talking about tax increase, you know, and we have a lot of people in this community that are on fixed income, you know, that now have to choose between paying this or paying that, selling their homes or not selling their homes, you know, and it's just, it's not fair to do this during the pandemic, unless you guys know when this pandemic is going to end and how it's going to end and how everybody's going to be affected by it. 
but given that we don't know that, to increase any type of increase at all is ridiculous. Everything is already going up. Groceries is up, electric, gas, and now property tax. And it's unfair because we don't understand how it's being in increased and by how much and why. So unless there's a proper plan that everybody understands why it's happening, it does not need to happen right now. Like we need to take in consideration our people that live in Brockton, the struggle that they're having and think of better ways to use the funds that are coming our ways instead of putting it back on us. Like we shouldn't be responsible for all these increases that are happening. So I'm completely against it and that's all. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Um, we're going to move on with anyone that's here in favor and opposition. I have Abby and Martha, whose hands up. Hi, my name is Martha Forrester. I live at 71 Rockland Street here in Brockton. I have to say I am deeply opposed to the increase. I have done nothing to my property. I have no money to do anything to my property right now. And yet my value keeps increasing. I've had you out twice now to reassess my evaluation. I will do it a third time if I have to, but I have to think in this time, you've increased my water bill. I see opposition for movement on properties. I see properties being built that are condos, market rate. Who wants to live here? Nobody. You raised my water bill, you did nothing with it. Actually, that line item was actually moved to something else. I want my property value to stay as it was. I've done nothing. Others who've done more increase to their work, either side of me have increased their values drastically. Their value went down. So I'm in a opposition. Thank you. Is there anyone else that would like to speak in favor or in opposition on this matter? Please raise your hand. Um, Is there no way to read what's going on in the chat? Because I think a lot of people have some valid questions and um, concerns on the chat. Sorry, Ellie. I'm sorry. Did, yes, but I, I mean, that's the chat isn't, we, this isn't a question and answer type of thing. This is a public hearing for the, uh, for the public to really speak in favor and opposition. Um, so I'm not, I can't, I know that there's people making comments in the chat room, but I can't go in there and, and make those um I can't, I mean, I can't answer those questions in the chat room, but if somebody would like to speak and I see um, uh, State Rep Dubois has her hand raised. Uh, State Rep Dubois, please state your name and address to the clerk. Hi everyone, my name is Michelle Dubois. I live at 6 Bank Street, Brockton, Mass. I uh, was on the city council for 10 years, so I, I appreciate all your hard work to each and every member here, as well as um, city council president, um, Shirley Azak. I think you're doing a good job tonight, and thank you so much for all your hard, dedicated work for the city. I am making a comment tonight in opposition to a property tax increase. Um, of course, as people's values of their homes increase, um, the bill will go up even if the um, tax per thousand of value stays the same. Um, I'm specifically um, commenting in opposition of either moving some of the total levy toward the single family and multifamily homeowners and specifically um, commenting in opposition to any increase um, in taxation per thousand dollar of a value. So whatever it was for this tax cycle, I think it should be for next tax cycle. Um, and that is my comment for this evening. And I appreciate you and all the work that you all do. Thank you, as well as the residents. Thank you, State Rep Dubois. Um, I don't see any other hands up. Is there anyone else here that would like to speak in favor or in opposition? Ms. Uh, Louise Connor, please state your name and address to the clerk. My name is Louise Connor. I live at 24 DuPont Circle in Brockton. And I just found out about this, but I discovered that my um, property value is going up $38,000. I totally disagree with that. Um, my house is 100 years old and it needs a ton of work. But the rest of my neighbors, it's just all over the place. It's 5,000, 10,000. And I discovered that my house is listed as a four bedroom 
when it's a three bedroom. And so I'm not quite sure why that's the case, but I've been here 30 years and it's always been a three bedroom. So I obviously totally disagree with taxes going up and I'd kind of like to understand how my house is worth $38,000 more than it was last year. <clears throat> Just to help Ms. Connor, um, our assessors have stated in the past that there is an abatement period, so you can abate uh, the, the taxes. So if you don't believe the information is correct, that is something that you can, um, you know, that you you can do. So if you want more information on that, I would suggest you contact the assessor's office. Okay. Are you all set? Are you all done yep. with your comment? Yep. Thank you. Um, I have Ida Speller. Please um, state your name and address to the clerk, please. My name is Ida Speller. I live at 25 Charlene Drive, Charlene Drive in Brockton. For the past 42 years I've been living here, my road has never been paved, always patched. I don't understand why taxes are going up. We haven't done anything significant. So I, for one, am against it. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Beller. Anyone else? Uh, uh, John, I just, it just says John. So um, John, please come forward, state your name and address to the clerk. Uh, yeah, John Barrows, uh, 103 South Lady Street, Brockton. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm against it. Um, are you guys doing this based on the recent sales? Because I see towards Brockton's law. Just the re I'm, I didn't hear your question, yeah. sir. I don't know if anybody else did. We seem to have lost you, Sabaro. Are you there? Yeah, can you hear me? Now we can, yes. What was your statement? I We didn't. Yeah, I'm in opposition to it. Um, okay. I was wondering if they're doing the increases based on what's going on in the in the trends with the market. There's obviously people are moving to Brockton. There's a lot of sales in Brockton, and some of these, you know, multifamilies are going for a lot more. Mine's a one family, but I'm wondering why they're doing the increase now. Is it because? Sure. So that's what we do every year, and this is just to, for clarification. Every year, the city council sets this tax factor, which um, it it's not you know, I think you're calling it increases, but it's, we're setting the tax factor. This is done every year. We're required to do it by the uh, D Department of Revenue. And, um, you know, I'm not sure what part of the meeting you logged on at, but there was a lot of information that was given at the beginning of this meeting. Are you there? Uh, yeah, I understand that. I, I was here for the okay. beginning of the meeting. Sure, so I mean, I'm my, sure my those questions were- the, Yeah, so I'm just wondering because I purchased my house in 2006 and I was paying $2,700 a year and now it's up to 4,400. So, I mean, obviously they go up every year. Um, so they changed the tax rate. Obviously it used to be higher. It used to be like $15. Now it's less, but what they're doing is increasing the property value, which in turn, that's how they actually get more money out of you. And that this evening is where we set the tax factor that will, that will be fun. Um, the next, oh. so we were, were able to send out the um, the tax bills. I'm sorry, I seem to be either losing you or my internet's bad, but are you there? Yeah, I'm are you there. all I, set, I, Mr. Barris? Okay. Yeah, I'm all set, thank you. Okay. Is there anyone else that would like to speak in, on this matter in favor or in opposition? If so, please raise your hand. Is there anyone else that would like to Madam speak President, in favor. If, if I could yes. unmute um, Al Lynch, they're having a difficulty with the raise hand option. Oh, okay, so sure. Give, um, yep. That person an opportunity. Okay, yes, I don't see that. So please. Uh, um, Al Lynch, um, you're, I, you're unmuted I, if you'd like to make a comment. I did comment, thank you very much. I, I, do, I don't have the option to raise hand, but I did speak, so I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so I, I do apologize, everybody bear with us. I would just like to make a quick comment. I know this meeting was supposed to be live. It was supposed to take place on uh, this past Wednesday evening, December 2nd, but due to 
uh, health reasons, we were we needed to postpone this meeting to this evening and it needed to be via Zoom because City Hall is close to the public. So I just want to make sure that I clarified that with everybody. Um, you know, so I appreciate everybody's patience. Technology is wonderful, but it's, um, it's you know, I this would be a, a little better in person, but um, bear with us, we will get through it. And I just want everybody to know that we're always here, whether it's our department heads or our, the city council, we're here to answer your questions, to work with you. Um, this is a public hearing that is held every year for the uh, purposes of setting the tax factor. Um, so I don't see any other, I don't see any other people, anybody else? I'm just, I'm gonna be a little patient. Um, Ms. Nancy D. Macedo Fernandez, you have your hand raised. Are you uh, please state your name and address to the clerk? You, can you hear us, Mr. D. Macedo? Good evening, everybody. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Please state your name and address to the clerk. Nancy D. Macedo Fernandez, 305 Quincy Street, Brockton, Mass. Thank you. Um, I'm just putting my two cents in. I'm against the, I'm in opposition against the tax rate, especially during these times. Um, in good conscience, you guys went and raised our water rates. Now you want to raise taxes. I don't think it's a good idea, especially now. Are you all set, Ms. DiMasiero? Yes. Okay, thank you for your comment. Is there anyone else that's, that's here in favor or in opposition that would like to speak on this matter? Nope, seeing none, I'm going to close this portion of the hearing. The public hearing is now closed to the, um, the open uh, meetings closed to the uh, public and counselors at this time we will take written and oral arguments. Um, counselors, Councilor Fawa. Uh, I have- Thank, thank you, Madam Chair. I'm sorry uh, I was muted. Um, colleagues, I don't think there's ever been a time when the residents needed our help more than now. Uh, taxes are going to go up. I mean, they, they're going to go up. The amount that we raise and appropriate goes up 2.5% every year, and obviously you have to collect the revenue to cover that. And I might add only a small portion of what our budget is comes from our property taxes collected. I, don't, I think we collect about 155 million and our budget is over 400 million. So we are very heavily dependent upon fees and state aid and chapter 70 uh, school aid. Uh, last year, we adjusted the rate um, and we favored slightly the businesses. I think we have to go in the other direction. I think we have to give as much assistance to our residents as we can. Now, I'm prepared for someone to say, well, you know, what's a couple of hundred dollars? I had someone say to me the other day, and it really stuck with me, a couple of hundred dollars is 200. Wing, you're muted. Can't hear you. I just hit on mute. Are we better now? Yeah. I just think we have to go to the maximum and help our residents. It's as simple as that. I don't think I need to say any more. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Councilor. Councilor Thompson. Uh, thank you, Madam President. Um, so I think it's, a, it's important to note uh, that we are not voting to increase taxes this evening. Uh, we are voting on how to allocate or shift the tax burden between our resident, our commercial, and our industrial properties. Now, this is not a part of the job that any one of us enjoys. Uh, I'm a taxpayer as well. But I do recommend that all residents uh, review what tax abatements are available on our city website and apply for any that you qualify for. Now, as our CFO has stated in the past, uh, has stated that uh, in the past, this council, its usual practice is to shift the tax burden um, from the residents uh, to our commercial and our industrial properties. 
as Councilor Farwell just stated, uh, last year, the previous council decided to provide our commercial and our industrial businesses some relief from that usual uh, burden shift. So I also concur with Councilor Farwell that this year, uh, given circumstances of the pandemic and our, um, our request for increased water and sewer fees, that it is my recommendation that this council provide our residents relief and, and uh, accept uh, the 175 uh, shift percentage. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Um, was that? Councillor. Yes, Councillor. Yes. Thank you. I, um, I do have a few councillors. Is this regarding what Councillor Thompson? I do have a few councillors that have their hands up. Is this a? I haven't heard a motion yet. That's what I mean. I it wasn't in the form of a motion. That well, I, I haven't heard a motion. I, I have the floor now. I believe. Well, well I I, it's, I I have uh, order. I'm not sure who's speaking. Who's Sorry, speaking? Council Who said Thompson. point of order? Yeah, that was that was me, um, Madam President. Yes. So I, I guess I wanted, if we were all going to make um, comments and then at the end of that start making motions so that everybody could be heard prior to us voting on specific classification shifts. Sure, That's yes, I have some councils that have their hands up. So Councilor Cruz, I know there's a few councils that have had their hands up. Did you have anything regarding Councilor Thompson's comment or is it, do you have no, a I want to make up? my own comments. Oh, okay, there's Councilor, I have a couple of councilors before you. Okay. Councilor Mendez. Yes, hi. So um, this is a very important meeting because I believe it clarifies a lot of things uh, to our residents and also to our councils. And what I really would like to stress and that I think it hasn't been spoken tonight, when I was uh, at a meeting with uh, our CFO and also with Mr. O'Donnell, I specifically asked the questions, our surrounding towns, why the tax rates are so much higher. And I specifically said, especially if the towns, if they're building new schools, then they really put that burden on the residents. And what uh, Mr. Uh, Troy Clarkson explained was the fact that there is even a way, because we are limited by law with the two and a half percent, but some of these towns, they can go back to the residents and increase it even further in order for them to be able to build schools and things like that. And in the city of Brockton, we've been talking so much regarding the public safety complex. So I did ask that question, is that gonna be something that we're gonna be bringing it into the voters to do the same? And what was explained to me is that no, in Brockton, we don't do that. We keep it within our limit and we only use it to what we have. So we don't give the residents any burden if we wanna do the public safety complex, we wanna do uh, the new high school and, and run and do these things. So I understand that is a, a big burden, but we're looking to decrease the tax rate. And I agree uh, once we start doing the motions to give the biggest relief as possible to our residents and our homeowners, because I do think that, especially now in COVID, it's much needed. But I do think it's important that once we look in Brockton, how much we have here in this city, in comparison to the towns that doesn't even have their own hospital, they share, uh, it's Abington and Rockland, they share their own water. There's so much less involved in the city of Brockton and their tax rates for so much higher. So um, we'll be going to be looking to decrease it today to as much as possible legally allowed to the 175. And that is what I'm going to be looking to do as well once we have a, a motion on the floor. But yeah, that is. Yeah. Thank you, Councilor Mendez. I'm not sure who's speaking, but. Um, Councillor Nicastro, you're next. Thank you, Madam, Madam President. Good evening, everyone. This has been a terrific hearing. I just wanna remind everyone very quickly, and this is more, of course, for our viewing audience than for my colleagues and, and uh, you. The budget is proposed by the mayor and we set our budgets in the spring, we set it in June and Mayor Sullivan reduced 
his budget by $373,000 uh, from what was, what was proposed the prior year and we accepted and voted in a budget that was very close to the amount he proposed. Um, we must raise uh, sufficient funds to cover the budget. That's our job tonight. Um, and we're looking at a shift. Um, and I just wanted to, uh, one aside, uh, we're, we're, not, we're having a hearing live. We're not dealing with the chat room. I did see, however, when I took a glimpse at the chat room, someone mentioned, well, why don't we use CARES Act funds to provide additional revenue for the city to operate on? That's not what CARES Act funds are for. They're only to reimburse un unexpected expenses directly related to the pandemic. So I'm sorry, that sounds interesting, but that's not an avenue we can go down. Um, I, I feel very strongly that during a pandemic with so many people not working and hurting, um, I must support the largest shift, which is 175. And that's what I will be doing this evening. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you, Councilor. Councilor Lally. Thank you, Madam President. Um, I had originally intended to, to raise my hand and then, and then make or second um, the motion for a move to 175. I think it's, it's really what we have to do. Um, we did favor the, uh, the businesses slightly um, last year when we, when we did this. Uh, and again, I know, I know other counselors have said it, but the mayor in the introduction of his budget produces um, a, you know, ba basically a tax increase. And then when the budget is voted on and passed by the council, um, we have agreed to raise the taxes. Uh, and so I think the, the public hearings at, at the budget in front of the budget, um, I think really are very essential. And I think what we need to do is sort of in, increase the attendance in them as well. Um, Cause that's, that's where a lot of the, uh, you know, a lot of the tax questions will come up too. Um, this is not an easy year. It's not a fun year. It's not, it's not good, but this is, this is what we have to do. Raising, you know, raising it as much as we can to benefit the residents. So putting it up the full 0 .03. Um, and I know Councillor Thompson uh, originally brought it up and Councillor Farwell uh, called for it as well. Um, I would be happy to second whatever motion comes out of this. Shirley, Sorry, Councilor Cruz and Councilor Cardo. So you had your hands up. So Councilor Cruz, you have the floor. Thank you. Um, it, it, this is difficult times and this, this is a difficult and every year it's the most difficult meeting we have for in large part because it's not understood even by most of my colleagues most years. The tax burden went up the day we passed the, the budget. Tonight is not about, uh, and so many of the, so much of the public, I understand their questions are not, in, uh, their comments are not in favor of a tax increase. Nobody is, by the way, but that's not what we're doing tonight. That has already been done. That was done back at the end of June. When we approve the budget, we approve the increase in taxes. What we're looking at tonight is what's called the factor. And unfortunately, people tend to look at it as a competition between businesses and homeowners. It's not. As it is, and in fact, uh, the information is in here from uh, Mr. O'Donnell's packet. The uh, businesses account for approximately 15% of the taxable property in this, in this city. The, f by putting the factor where we put it, the businesses pay about triple that, I believe it is. Uh, my numbers could be off, and again, this packet's pretty thick, but already pay most of the, uh, pay much of the, uh, much more than they use in, in, uh, in uh, services from the city. But the reason I don't support going to 175 is not that. People tend to think businesses are deep pocketed uh, monsters that can come up with anything. Most of the businesses in the city are mom and pop businesses. When we change that factor, and in fact, we had many of those businesses in 
in front of us about a month ago that Councilor Cardoso brought in, and they talked about the fact that they are teetering right now on whether they're going to stay in business or not, particularly restaurants, liquor stores, small, small businesses like that. If we increase this f factor, we may, we may push some of those people over the edge. And don't forget, those people employ our, in, our citizens. These are not mostly people that, have, that are just self-employed. These are people who run businesses with eight, 10, maybe 20, maybe 30 employees. If we push some of those employees out of some of those businesses out of business, those homeowners now are out of jobs. And then we're stuck, the, the tax factor won't matter. They'll be out of jobs and unable to pay their tax bills. So I can't, I can't support going to 175. I would support going back to 173, but let's not, let's not uh, just kowtow, I'm sorry, not, not kowtow, let's not pander and make this an easy decision. It's a difficult decision. And by going to 175, we leave ourselves, first of all, no relief because the public may not know this, but 175 is the maximum that we can go to. It leaves us nowhere to go in the future if we do need even more. The, uh, and the other part was one of the uh, homeowners had said, who wants to live here? Well, the reason the rates are, that the uh, evaluations are going up is because Brockton is a tremendously attractive place to live right now. The houses are selling for very, very high numbers. The market is so hot, it's, it's scalding. And that's why those numbers go up. But that's not what you need to look at. Don't look at the tax rate, look at your tax bill because the rate is backed into, and these numbers are backed into by what we're raising tonight. So I won't be able to support 175. I would be able to support 173. And please keep, keep an open mind on what those businesses are. Those businesses are the same people we're talking about trying to keep their homes. Thank you. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you, Councilor Council Cardoso. Thank you, Madam President. And I want to thank everyone who uh, participated tonight, all of the residents that came out. And I'm really, really concerned about these property tax valuations. I'm hearing from folks that people need to pay attention to their property cards and that they need to file for abatements and all of that. I want everybody to keep in mind that we have a large community of folks that do not, I mean, I don't understand this and I'm a registered nurse you know, and I have a degree, much less our, our residents that don't speak English and don't know how to navigate the system. And trust me, I get complaints from many of them that do go to City Hall for help and they're not treated fairly. So I just want, it, I, I just want folks at home and people on this call to understand that is not as easy as we think it is. We have about 40 people who participated tonight and these are English speaking savvy, people, great people, but we have a lot more homeowners that don't understand, don't speak English and, and don't know how to apply for abatements and don't know how to navigate the system. And those are the folks that are hurting. And yes, to Councilor Cruz's point, we do have businesses that are hurting, but we also have funding that we're sitting on that could help those businesses that we're not giving out. So we have a lot more homeowners that are suffering in the city and um, need some help. We've already increased their water bill. I voted no for that. Tonight, since this, conf since this conflicting um, information about what we're voting on here, I want to understand what my vote means. And the only vote I have tonight is no increase on property taxes, not even a dime for any resident in this city. So when I make my vote, that's all I want to know. What am I voting on? Because I will not increase anything for anyone during a pandemic. Thank you very much. And thank you for everyone who participated. Thank you, Councillor. Any other counselors, anybody else? Um, I, I just, I know a few people in the public had their hand up or had made comments. The public hearing part has closed. I just want to make sure I, that uh, we're clear on that. I did close the public hearing part. Um, is there any counselors that have not made a statement or uh, asked any questions before we do a second round? Madam Chairman, can you hear me? Councilor yes. Ianieri. Yes, Councilor Ianieri, you have the okay. floor. I have, I, have been, I have been present uh, since the beginning. If there was, uh, if you didn't Thank hear you. me, so I have been listening. Um, okay. And I'm, I'm only going to say a couple of quick things, but I, 
I do ditto an awful lot of what my colleague from Ward 1 has mentioned. Uh, I guess that's the experience that we've had over these years of setting. This is my 17th or 18th, I think, uh, we'll go around 17th, go around with the uh, setting attacks um, uh, a rate, you know, based upon, uh, you know, the figure that we have to use and not so much setting a tax rate. But in any case, um, it's not the easiest thing um, for us to do. But he did mention, and, and keep this in mind, that no matter what happens, when the next budget is prepared, that means the mayor still has to use the full two one half percent to make everything work. Your tax will go up again. Let's go back a few years. We had a mayor, God rest his soul, that came in and said, I will not raise your taxes. And we went one year when he prepared the budget. Then he found out when he was preparing his second budget, what Mr. Condon said would happen is you have to go to the full two and one half percent. We're missing the boat here. Um, and I, I thank everybody for speaking in regards to this issue, but this city is still under two and a half percent. We have been since, since 1981. And that's what's really hurt this city is the fact that we are still under a two and a half percent going on 30 some odd years. And that's what's, that's what's made it very difficult over these years. But, but setting what, what, what we try to do is to set it the best way we can and, and, and do the best thing we can to, to, to give you know, the best um, figure that we can for the residents to, um, to, to have you know, an easy uh, piece of you know, trying to pay their, their tax. Uh, and, and I understand how that works as well. Um, but still, I just, I just want to keep in mind that, you know, what we're trying to do here and, and Council Cruz is right. I mean, um, you know, a lot of, a lot of businesses here, a lot of, a lot of people live here and, and totally, totally correct. If anyone paid attention this summer and I was paying attention this summer because, because of reason why, uh, you sold over 200, 250 homes sold in this city and, and brought in a whole new thing thrust of new people coming into this city because they want to come to Brockton. They see Brockton in a different light than, than some people may see it or maybe how we see it. But still, we, we've got a long way to go. And I, and I just feel that if we go with the 175, um, we could be hurting ourselves in the end. And I, and I would also be looking at the 173 factor as well. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Councilor. Councilor Monahan. Yeah, thank you, Madam Chair. And I want to tell you, uh, uh, Councilor Anieri is right, uh, I, and I understand what C Councilor uh, Cardoso was saying also. It's a very tough decision to make. And I think, again, we cannot say we're not raising taxes because the taxes were raised when we passed the budget this past summer. So no matter what anybody says, the taxes have been raised. It's a factor of who, how we pay for them, and that's the, that's the whole ball of wax here. And... and <laughs> And when we talk about splitting it and commercial and residential, like Councilor Cruz said, we are, especially in Ward 2, I have a lot of small mom and pop stores. Those people are going to be hurting. Uh, and like he said, people could be out of jobs, what have you. So even 175, I split the difference and say 174 tops. But we have to keep those, those um, small mom and pop stores keep them in business they do they hire Brockton residents they have to keep their jobs so it's it's a it's a tough balancing act but we've got to do what's best for everybody and I think a lot of people don't realize that when you're paying that tax levy the more commercial we have that come into the city and pay taxes the less the residents have to pay so they pay more of that total tax levy, the more businesses we have in here, we have to be attracted to business. I know this is a tough year, but I'm not going to go once. I don't think I can go the 175. Maybe 174 is probably what I'm going to go by, and even that's a little high. But still, um, uh, we have to like do what's best for everybody and keep people in business, and that includes the residents who work in this city. So thank you, thank you, Madam Chairman. Thank you, Councillor. Have all the councilors made statements? Uh, I know Councilor Fowell, you have your hand up. Um, do you have a motion or are you going to? No, I, I, I'll let Councilor Thompson or someone else make a motion. I, I just want to comment on how I, I respect Councilor Cruz, Councilor Ianeri, 
and Councillor Monaghan's comments. But we have done a lot for business in the city. Almost every project that's come in and some that are pending, they get tax increment financing, they get tax increment exemptions. Uh, I mean, we, this city has been very business friendly. This is a unique situation. We have people that have to make a, a decision between food, clothing for their kids, take the pet to a vet. They don't have the money. And if we take away all the money from the people who live here and they have no expendable income, they're not gonna go to the businesses anyway. So I, I do hear the plea for moderation, but I think if ever there were a reason to go to 175 and grant relief, it is this year. It, it's unfortunate, but it's reality and, and we've got to deal with it. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. I, um, okay, Councillor Mendez. Yes, um, I'd like to make the motion to shift the burden from the 172% to the 175%. Second. A motion has been made and properly seconded. Um, Attorney Resnick, will you do the roll call, please? On the motion. Council Cardoso. On the motion, I'd like to ask if this 175 lowers taxes for the residents. Yes. Ms so that, Do you want Mr. Claxon to answer? You, how about we have Mr. Claxon answer that, uh, Councilor Mendes? Yes. Mr. Claxon, can you answer that, please? For yes, happy to answer that. The answer is no. Uh, and I would reiterate what Councilor Cruz uh, said earlier: the raising of taxes is determined by the budget that you passed. There is no scenario. Uh, in which you can not raise taxes based on the vote you're taking tonight. However, the motion that has been made will shift the burden um, and it will be the most advantageous for the residents. And so based on, in the packet that was provided to you, and these are estimates based on averages, but if you shift to 175, the average tax bill, residential single family, will go up by approximately $70. Does that Thank answer you. your question, Councillor? Thank you, uh, Mr. Clarkson. Thank you, Mr. Clarkson. Um, Councillor Thompson, you have your hand, is this on the motion or does this, do you have, is it on the motion? I see your hand up, but. Yeah, well, I, I raised my hand prior to the, uh, the okay. motion being made, but sure, on, on the motion, um, it's 175 from my understanding will, will provide businesses with some tax relief from my understanding that they would be looking at a, some relief from their taxes. It wouldn't be as high relief as 172 or 173, but there would be some relief uh, for their taxes at 175. So I just wanted to make that clear as well. And, um, I will be voting for 175 when it comes to my turn. Thank you, Councillor. Um, Attorney Resnick, uh, roll call vote, please. ASAC? Yes. Cardozo? Yes. Cruz? No. Ian Erie? No. Farwell? Yes. Lally? Yes. Mendez? Yes. Monahan? Councillor Monahan? No, sorry. Nicastro? Yes. Is Councillor Rodriguez here? I haven't seen him and or he wasn't. Thompson. No. Yes. Did you get Councilor Ian Neary, uh, Attorney Resnick? I did. That's okay. seven in favor of one point or 175 and three in opposition. I so, move reconsideration in the hope it does not prevail. Second. A motion has been made and properly seconded for reconsideration. All those in favor of reconsideration, 
Please I have to take a roll call vote. Oh, okay, Madam Clerk, please. A do the ASAC? Roll call. Uh, no. Cruz? You skipped me. Oh, sorry, Cardozo? <laughs> no. Cruz? Yeah, muted, Councilor Cruz. Yes. Ian Erie? Yes. Farwell? No. Lally? No. Mendez? No. Monahan? No. Nicastro? No. Thompson? No. Um, two in favor, eight in opposition. Reconsideration fails. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Um, at this time, do we need to take a recess, correct? Um, yes, one, one quick recess and um, should be back in three minutes. Okay, taking a few minute recess. We're returning from recess, Attorney Resnick. Yep, so I'm, at, for everyone's just knowledge, I'm gonna be reading the order, which will reflect the 175. Um, tax clarification adjustment. And I'll be reading what that, that shift looks like. Um, and the total at the end totals 100. Order that the city council hereby determines the percentages of the local tax levy in accordance with the provisions of MGL chapter 40, section 56 to be borne by each class of real property as defined in section 2A of chapter 59 in personal property. Residential, 71.8507. Commercial, 18.8389. Industrial, 3.5201. Personal property, 5.7902. The factor for such clarification shall be 175%. Thank you, Attorney Resnick. Somebody needs to move that. So yes, yeah, so we need to take a motion to approve that order. I'll make that motion. We're in favor of the 175, someone would make that motion. I'll make that motion. A motion was made and properly seconded. All those in favor, uh, Madam Clerk, please read the roll. ASAC? Yes. Cardozo? Yes. Cruz? No. Ian Airy? No. Farwell? Yes. Lally? Yes. Mendez? Yes. Monahan? Yes. Nicastro? Yes. Thompson? Yes. That's 10 in the affirmative, two in opposition. The order carries. The order is adopted. I move reconsideration and I hope it does not prevail those percentages. Second. A motion has been made and properly seconded for reconsideration. Madam Clerk, please read the roll. Uh, ASAC? No. Cardozo? No. Cruz? Yes. Ian Airy? Yes. Farwell? No. Lally? No. Mendez? No. Monahan? No. Nicastro? No. Thompson? No. That's two in favor of reconsideration, eight in opposition. Reconsideration fails. Councilors, that concludes our special meeting this evening. Um, at this time, we're going to adjourn. Uh, just to let everybody know that's on here for the uh, public hearing, uh, the uh, second part of our, uh, actually our finance meeting, which uh, was scheduled for 7 p.m., which is starting a little late, is not open for public comment. So if you want to continue and follow this meeting, you will need to um, go on uh, either the Brockton Cable Access Live channel or via YouTube Live. So at this time, Whoever is uh, just viewing this in the public, you uh, you will not be admitted be admitted into the room. So thank you, and um, at this time, this meeting's adjourned.